We were talking in our last episode about the concept of the archetypes of the collective unconscious and the archetypes like the youth, the lover, the wanderer, the virgin, the trickster, the artificer, the king, the queen, the mystic, the sage. But let's talk about today about the warrior archetype, which is what one of the most powerful archetypes of all. Um, and the warrior archetype kicks in for men and for women too, sometime around the age of 12, 13, 14, and carries on through mid 20s into the 30s and even beyond. And what are some of the attributes of the warrior archetype? These are kind of impulses that we, once the archetype kicks in, we suddenly find ourselves feeling these things against our will. We don't even know why. For instance, for young men, when the warrior archetype kicks in, we suddenly want to put on a football helmet and go out and beat the crap out of our buddies on the field. Uh, we want to do things like drive fast. We want to take crazy chances, jump off buildings. We want to blow things up. The other thing that we want to do is we're, we have this tremendous urge to hang around with our peers. You know, if we're 16, 17 years old, we want to be with our buddies, with our homies, our gang, our posse, right? You can't stop us from doing that. Another thing that happens when the warrior archetype kicks in for young men is we seek out mentors. We, we kind of want to find a coach, uh, the tough old sergeant, um, somebody that will be a role model for us or um, guide us as we go go through this phase, this warrior archetype phase. Now, the, we're gonna talk in another um, episode here about the Spartan training, the agoge, the upbringing, which they took boys at age seven and they, and they isolated them from their families, took them away from their families until they were 18. And it was all military training and that kind of thing for that era. And the Spartans were very smart. They might not have had this concept from, from Jung or anybody like that, but they knew that in those ages, boys were going to want to do certain things. They were going to want to fight and bond and do all that sort of thing. What's interesting too about the warrior archetype, and it hasn't really been studied as much, I wish it had, is how the warrior archetype works for women. Because we certainly know that at the same age that it kicks in for men, it kicks in for women as well. I mean, if you watch uh, a college female volleyball game or basketball game or softball game or something like that, these young ladies are killers, you know? And particularly when they're, uh, there's, there's also, I wish this has been studied more. There is such a thing as, and I talked about this a lot in my book, uh, Last of the Amazon, a particular type of energy of women in all female groups. And we all sort of kind of know about that. I wish there were some real science on this. Just as with all males in a male gang, how they can get, they can, they can feed off each other and get into a kind of a state. Obviously, it's the same thing is true with women. So the warrior archetype does not just apply to young men. It applies to young women as well. Um, I'll tell you a personal story here for whatever this is worth. Um, during the Vietnam era, I was dodging the draft, didn't want to go to Vietnam, and I wound up joining the Marine Corps, the Marine Corps Reserves, because it was the only place I could get in. And when I went to boot camp at Paris Island, I had set my mind completely, I'm a civilian, I wanna stay a civilian, I'm gonna resist the brainwashing, no matter what it is, I'm not gonna get into this. And I fought it absolutely as hard as I could, but it didn't work. By the time graduation day rolls around, you know, they, they don't call you a Marine when you're in there, you're just a maggot or a turd, you know? And finally on graduation day, they call you a Marine for the first time. And I can say that for myself and for a few other guys who were exactly like me, there was not a dry eye in the house when we heard when they played the Marine Corps hymn. And the real reason was, I believe, that my warrior archetype had kicked in. I couldn't resist it and it just totally, I bought into the program completely. Here's another one last thing that I want to talk about here. Last episode, I was talking about this book, King, Warrior, Magician, Lover by Robert Moore and Douglas Gillette. Again, these are the archetypes, king, warrior, magician, lover. And one of the points that they make, this comes back to kind of training, is that every aspect, the virtues of a warrior, has a dark side and a light side. And the whole point of training 
Spartan training, any military training, whatever, is to, is to bring out the light side and to suppress the dark side. For instance, one of the attributes of the warrior archetype is aggressiveness. And aggressiveness obviously can be great when we're trying to accomplish a task or some overcome an obstacle, but aggressiveness can become brutality. It can become the sort of thing that abuses prisoners of war or abuses people who are in a weaker position. So the training is to get the light side in, in, in power over the dark side. Uh, another aspect of the warrior archetype is obedience. You know, it is a natural thing. If you're on the football team, if you're in the military, whatever, you obey the coach, you know, um, you obey the sergeant. But obedience, if you get to the dark side, it becomes like the Nuremberg trials, where people will do anything that they're told by the Fuhrer or whatever it is, and their excuse is, I was only following orders. So again, this is a really interesting aspect that comes out of this book, the dark side and the light side of every archetype, but particularly the warrior archetype. And we're gonna talk about this a lot more when we get into the limits of the warrior archetype and when things go bad and go wrong. Um, and the next episode we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about that directly. The next episode being why study the warrior archetype. Thank you.